Hello everybody, thank you for joining Rob and I. Today we are going to do a quick thing on changing your beliefs in regards to scholarships. I just want to take a quick moment to remind you that this is being sponsored by uh, the website scholarshipmembershipsite.com. So uh, as Robin and I were talking, we were having a conversation uh, following up with some of our past conversations about building relationships and how it's not something that happens overnight and how uh, one of the first steps is believing that relationships are important and then you start building those relationships. And this is important because it helps you find scholarships and other information and I have a really great example. So since I've been helping people find scholarships, I had a phone call from a member of my family who was telling me about a scholarship that's available in the Fresno Clovis area. And I thought it was really interesting because she's like, yeah, I received your emails. I know things, you know, you're trying to help people and this is a resource that I want you to know about. And what was also really interesting is she was telling me about one of the people she knows who actually donates money to this particular scholarship. And she thought, well, you know, this person's getting older in age and, you know, it would be nice if somebody knew their story as far as why are they donating money for scholarships. And she thinks that, you know, the president of this or nonprofit organization was coaching this woman to say, you know, hey, you know, I know you have some disposable income. Why don't you give back to the community, help create a legacy? And, you know, my aunt's thinking, well, this woman's getting older in age. She might pass, you know, within the next couple of years. It would be nice if someone knows her story. And it just seems like I'd be a good fit for interviewing people like that to help, you know, the audience and people watching. You know, why is it that these people want to give money? Why, you know, what is their belief system where they want to give money to people that they don't know and help the community. So it brought up this huge dialogue and conversation about our beliefs and what we believe we can or can't get, why we can and can't get it, and also building relationships. So uh, one of the things that I did is I went to the store and I bought this really cute little uh, Christmas card and I'm going to send it to my aunt, thanking her for taking the time to let me know about this particular organization and the scholarship. And just letting them know that, you know, I wish them Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, let her know that I'm looking forward to the new year. And I appreciate her contacting me and uh, letting her know that I want to go forward uh, with, you know, helping people build their legacy as far as scholarships. So, you know, that goes back to the whole building relationships rather than saying I want something and helping people understand what it is I'm doing and how I'm trying to help other people. So, um, and to really solidify this, I've been thinking about this for quite a while, you know, and I ended up watching a hangout and, you know, came across someone who had a really good quote that I'm going to read to you that I really, it really kind of cemented this belief. And it's by Marty Lee Co. And it says, I create my beliefs, my beliefs determine what I do and feel. Therefore, I create my life and I can change it. And the reason this is so important is because I think a lot of times a lot of us grow up in families where there's not enough money. And so we have a hard time believing that, you know, on an intellectual level, we understand people give out scholarships. Uh, we know it's possible. We know someone who's received one or we've heard about it in the news. But it always seems like, yeah, yeah, it's out there. It doesn't seem like it's really about us. And so sometimes, you know, some of the reasons that we might not go after the money as much as we think we can is because maybe we feel like we don't deserve it or because growing up there was a lot of situations where we wanted money and we were told no. And we were told no repetitively over, you know, our lifetime. And so we have a hard time believing, hey, you know, as a teenager, you know, as a kid, my, my parents wouldn't give me the $10, the $50, $100 to buy whatever. Like, why would some stranger I don't know give me $500 or $1,000 or more in school? So it's really about understanding this belief system and how do we change, change it so that we can get rid of some destructive feelings. And so, you know, to me, one of the things I liked about this website that I'm going to share with you is it talks about um, what are destructive beliefs and how do we get rid of them and understanding what they are and um, ultimately 
how do we eliminate the old beliefs so we can have room for new beliefs that will help support us in our goal and in our mission. And one of the things I thought was really, really cool that I watched during this presentation is he was talking about impossible. Impossible really equals impossible. There's only a small little difference between the two, and that's the apostrophe. So I thought that was really cool because something small can make such a huge, huge difference. So what it is, is it's a website, and it's called RecreateYourLife.com. Uh, it's a free resource that you can use. And pretty much when you go on there, um, there's an, a selection of three things that you can choose from, uh, three beliefs that people might struggle with. And I went ahead and I went through the exercise myself, and I went ahead and used the one that I'm not good enough. And, you know, it's really interesting because I feel like it took me about an hour. It could have been about 30 minutes. Um, but what it is is you go to the website and it plays a video and then you type in an answer. And you're basically having an interaction with this video. And so, you know, you're supposed to say your answers out loud and to help you feel like you're engaging in the conversation. And really it's someone exploring uh, your past and how you do things. And so the idea that I learned is that, you know, me not being good enough, um, you know, I feel like I could have gotten a lot more money to pay for schooling than I did. So I did end up with some student loans. And when I went through this process, you know, at first it felt kind of odd because I was just, you know, there's this video that's talking about, well, remember a time when you felt like this? Or, you know, what did that feel like? Or what happened? And I'd write down like one or two sentences about you know that memory that it triggered and it brought back some very specific memories and I was just like wow like I didn't realize how this shaped my opinion and view of the world and it, it comes up with you know about six explanations for that and pretty much he says well if you look at that same experience differently because you had you know a mentor or a friend or someone that helped you put things into context you know it would it would be helpful and I think that's really helpful because I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to get the scholarship. Like, I'm either going to get it or I'm not going to get it. I get it and I'm a success, or I don't get it and I'm a failure. But maybe in the reality, you know, if you had that friend or mentor say, well, maybe it's unrealistic for you to think you're going to get all the scholarship money if you don't actually apply, or if you don't have someone proofreading your essays, or if you don't have that support system, you know, or if you're, you're not applying to, every, you know, a lot of scholarships and you think you're going to get every single scholarship you apply to, that's not realistic. And that person who knows you might be able to use a metaphor that you're familiar with because, you know, let's say you play soccer. You know, are you going to win every single game that you play at? Probably not, you know. And there's so many things that we do in life that we don't win every single time, but yet we expect to when we apply for scholarships, and when we don't get it, you know, we take it personally and it hits our self-esteem. And so I think looking back at some of these, these memories about, well, where did I get this, you know, about there not being enough money out there? Oh, well, you know, maybe they didn't have enough money, but that doesn't mean it's me. You know, maybe their life situation was different and doing the best that they could, you know, that's okay because they did what they could. But that's not me. That doesn't represent me or what I'm capable of doing. And it just kind of helps you re-see your past in a different point of view where you're like, wow, like, okay, I can change. I can uh, add some support in my life to do things a little differently. I can see things a little differently. So one of the things I'd like you to do, Robin, is um, if you can make time in your busy, busy schedule, is to go ahead and visit the website recreateyourlife.com. And it's a really, it's, it's really interesting. It's really good. So um, I know we have, we're doing a really, really short uh, hangout today because you have to be somewhere, and I appreciate you being here. Is there anything you'd like to say real quick? Um, just a, a check-in uh, real quick. I, I'm not sure if I said it on the last hangout, but I had put in the application fee for Smith, um, which to me felt like a really big commitment speaking of money and um, that to me uh, was a big hurdle that I was kind of waiting till kind of the last minute but I actually got it in before I thought I would and um, also 
Um, oh, I sent in my transcripts, and I am now in. I have someone following uh, my application, and so I have a contact. And when they receive my transcripts, now I'm getting information about like what else I have left to turn in. So it's really helpful to have somebody like on the other end tracking it, and I can call and email him whenever I need to. So that's exciting. Um, and then related to what you're talking about, like I'm really excited to check out this website. And um, yeah, I definitely I I have a lot of destructive beliefs, but I've also over the last mainly year and a half have really worked on identifying them. Um, for me, it's it's pretty ingrained, so it takes a lot of work for me to be aware of when they're happening. But uh, I feel like I now, I have a little bit more awareness of when that, that voice comes in my head where I'm like, wait, that's not true. You know, that, that black and white thinking of like, either you're, you're success or you're failure, or either you're good enough or you're not. It's like, there's so, I'm now realizing there's, there's many other alternatives or ideas about, you know, there's other options of ways of thinking. Right. But... And that's one of the things that I really like about this website is after you go through the exercise, he says, well, what if you had someone else there, like an Uncle Marty? You know, you had someone else who, while you were going through these events in your life, you know, say as a kid, you came over to Uncle Marty's house, and Uncle Marty asked you, you know, how was your day today? And you told Uncle Marty about all these things that happened. And Uncle Marty listened to you, and he might give you some feedback. Well, you know, maybe this happened, or maybe this happened, or, you know, maybe it's not that you didn't do it good enough. Maybe other people have unrealistic expectations of you, because how are you supposed to know how to do that if no one's ever taught you or trained you or coached you, or you're just learning? And so it kind of el starts to slowly eliminate some of these old beliefs because it's like, oh, well, you know, you're right. That that makes sense. Like, I can, I can, I can feel that in my heart. Like, I feel like I'm a good person and I do well. And maybe I don't do as good as the other person. But you doing as good as the other person doesn't have to do with how good you are as a person. It has to do with, you know, how much coaching have you received? How much of a support system do you have? And the thing that really opened up my eyes is a lot of times – you know, he talks about as a kid when we experience certain things growing up, we don't know what's going on and we're trying to understand our world. And so by default, for lack of other explanations, we tend to think it's us. You know, we tend to think, oh, I'm not good enough because I didn't do this, 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 or this very well. And the reality is you didn't have the support system, you didn't have this information, or maybe other people were going through stressful events and they didn't know how to communicate it, or maybe they took it out on you. And so as a kid, you're just observing all of this negativity and not realizing that's not the way it is for everybody. Not everybody's going through that. People are experiencing things differently. And, you know, that's part of this system is go talk to Uncle Marty. Like who, you know, what if you had friends? What if you had people, you talked to six friends, you know, it's likely that all your six friends are going to say something different, and each one's going to have a perspective, you know. Maybe you were so young and your parents just wanted to have this outstanding kid that they put a lot of expectations on you, not realizing they were stressing you out, or not realizing they expected you to perform academically up here, but the other kids who were performing academically up here had all these tutors or, you know, all these other things. So... It just really puts things back into perspective of, you know, there's other options. And, you know, for the amount of time it took, I was like, wow, like I've been dealing with this, you know, my whole lifetime. And now it only took, you know, 20, 30 minutes, an hour to comprehend the whole path and then go forward. It was like, wow, like, is that really possible? Like, I didn't think it was. And having gone through the exercise and the simplicity of it, like, wow, it is possible. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm recommending it because I think this exercise can be used in a number of different ways. And another way could also have to deal with writing. A lot of people don't like to write. They're afraid to write essays. They didn't do very well in school. 
maybe they got a lot of F's or B's or C's or D's on their essays, you know, maybe their essay was never good enough or whatever, and again, you can position it to the whole, well, maybe the kids that got A's had parents that spent more time helping them to write their essay or sat down with them at the kitchen table to help them. Or, you know, maybe these children had someone to read to them every night before bedtime, and so they loved English. You know, there's all these other different reasons, but sometimes we forget that and we just take it so personally as, oh, maybe it's not me. So I like this exercise in the sense that it's broad. You can use it for um, different things, like different things that are going on in your life. And, you know, certainly with writing essays, I, I think that's a good approach. You know, if you want to go through it once for the essays, and then maybe again for the scholarships, that's awesome. If there's something else going on in your life where you're like, ah, it's a great exercise for that too. Um, certainly it's about opening up your awareness and in the bigger picture, creating a support system and understanding resources that are out there and how to handle the change. Because with the economy and technology, things are changing so quickly that we have to get rid of these belief systems that, you know, I'm not good enough or, you know, I have to learn it all be right. Because as you learn something, it changes. And just like this Google Hangout, I learned it and then it changed. I'm like, ah, like I have to adapt and change. So from that standpoint, I appreciate you, Robin, for being willing to, like, interact and just kind of do this and... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So. <laughs> no, no, I no, I just appreciate the um, content of this uh, hangout. I think it's it's really important, um, not just the mechanics of writing or the mechanics of whatever you know you're doing for applying for scholarships or applying for grad school, but but the the feelings, the beliefs, the um, yeah, just the, just all of that. I mean, obviously, I'm interested in that because I'm interested in in social work and therapy, and uh, I'm I'm interested in that. But I, I think it's it's important to remember, um, and just also to like, if you apply for a scholarship, you might not get it because there might be tons of other people applying, like you're saying, and they may have had an edge over you, or they may not. You know, you don't know what the person that's picking is thinking, and so trying to like separate, like you said, not thinking it's all you and taking it personally, but just like keep moving forward. Like, okay, well I did that and it didn't work, but I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this one and I'm going to keep, like we talked about the radical mindset of two versus 20 or two versus 10, but it could be, <laughs> look at that. Wow. I'm already like jumping ahead, but yeah. Um, I just think this is a very important topic to discuss and I, I, it's something that's that's very personal and alive for me and uh, throughout these hangouts and then through other work I do outside of the hangouts um, I've really worked on specifically those those destructive beliefs that have held me back in the past um, and it's not it's not you know it's not easy it's it's hard it's hard but it's it's doable it just um, yeah changes it's it's hard, but it's worth it. And I, I've no, just in my my life, in just the last year and a half, I've really noticed a lot of changes and taking a lot more chances and more opportunities opening up. So, very very well said. Very well said. Okay. Um, well, I know you have to go. You've got a lot on your plate and a lot you've got to do. So um, definitely, we will reconnect next week and follow up on that exercise. And then we'll also continue to follow up on your personal statement, uh, since you said, I believe that's due in January in the new year. So we're going to go ahead and focus on that first, and then after you get through all of your personal statements, then we'll start focusing on the scholarships and really drilling down. But I thought this was important because I wanted to help get your mindset set of this is where we're going, this is you know what we're doing, to be on the lookout for scholarships and. Uh, certainly to start talking about it because you never know what people will call you up with the resource. So <laughs> with that being said, um, I just want to uh, reread this quote uh, by Marty Leoki. I create my beliefs. My beliefs determine what I do and feel. Therefore, I create my life and I can change it. So with that being said, I appreciate everybody watching and uh, 
certainly remember to please visit the website recreateyourlife.com and we'll look forward to seeing you next week.